All right, so our first unit with the verb star is dealing with feelings. And the first thing that we need to do is be able to conjugate the verb a star. So when you conjugate the verb a star, which means to be in a temporary sense, it's like a regular AR verb with a few exceptions. So go ahead and conjugate the verb a star as if it was a regular AR verb. In doing that, you'll need to conjugate yo as esto, tu as estas, usted, el, ella, and it, singular, as esta, nosotros and nosotras as estamos, vosotros and vosotras as estáis, and ustedes, ellos, and ellas, and it, plural, as estén. Now, I already said that this is not a normal AR verb, or we would have studied it with our AR verbs. So it has a few small changes to the conjugations. First of all, you need to put an accent over the A in estas, esta, and estan. And we've already used como estas and como esta before, so that shouldn't be too difficult to remember. So the only new one is the estan, having the accent over it. The yo form also needs to end in a y, not in the o as in normal. So it's a estoy. So it's a estoy, estas, esta, estamos, estáis, and estan. Now when I said it means to be temporary, I mean that you use it in the sense of things that change or can change. So you use this to mean am, is, and are when you're describing feelings of people or conditions of things. So, I am happy, I am sad, I am sick, I am embarrassed, the pizza is hot, the pizza is cold, those sorts of things are feelings and conditions. You also do it when you want to locate people or things. So if I wanted to say that the table is in Mrs. Qualley's room, I would use this verb. Or if I want to say we are in Mrs. Qualley's class, I would use this verb to mean am, is, and are. And the third reason is called present progressive. It's when you want to put something in an ing form. And more so than just saying um, I'm talking, I'm walking, I'm learning. But if you want to emphasize the nowness or the immediacy of the action that you're doing, you use present progressive. So this week we're going to just focus on number one, feelings and conditions. All right, so in your packet you have um, a series of faces that have Spanish feelings next to them. The first thing that I want you to notice is that almost all of these words end in the O slash A, which tells you that these are adjectives. These are words that will describe someone or something, and if it's masculine, it'll end in an O. If it's a feminine thing or person, it'll end in an A. And if it's masculine plural, it'll end in OS. If it's feminine plural, it'll end in AS. Now, there are only a few that are exceptions to that, and they will end in an E or a consonant. And then it's just like the colors that end in an E or a consonant. All you do is make it plural. So let's start at the top. Agotada means exhausted. And you want to highlight or underline that word because that is one that I will expect you to know on this list. You're not going to have to know all of the feelings or conditions on this list. Agotado. The next one, confundido, confused, confundido, and I would say it's close to being a cognate, at least the first four or five letters are the same. Ecstatico is definitely a cognate, meaning ecstatic. You just have to remember that there is an accent over the A and that there is an X in the Spanish version, not a C as in English version. The next one, enfermo, means sick. And enfermo is similar to the word infirmary, and if you go to the infirmary, it is 
place where sick people go, usually in the military, they have an infirmary. And the last one in that top row is so spechoso, and that means suspicious. And I would say that's somewhat of a cognate as well. Now highlight or underline all five of those feelings or conditions because you need to know all of those. In the second row, we have enojado, which means angry. To me, this one almost is a false cognate because it almost looks like the word enjoy. But maybe you can remember that you enjoy being angry. The next one is definitely a cognate. Esthetico is hysterical. Notice the spelling differences from Spanish is an I, English is a Y, and there's an accent over the E. Next one is another cognate. Frustrado is frustrated. Triste is sad. And this is one of those that don't end in an O or an A. So the only thing you can do to this one is triste or tristes. And the last one in that row is emocionado, which of course is a cognate for emotional. Highlight or underline all five of those in that row as well. The third row, avergonzado, is embarrassed. And it looks like average, and you can kind of remember that by the average person gets embarrassed. Avergonzado. Contento, looks like the word content, but most of us don't use content. We say happy. So if you want to say that you are happy and you are feeling that way, you would use contento. Malicioso looks like malicious, and that's exactly what it is, but you do not have to underline or highlight that word. It won't be used on the quiz or in your homework. Next one, asqueado, means disgusted. Once again, it's not one that you need to know for the quiz or homework this week. Asqueado. And asustado means frightened. And once again, it's not one that I'm going to ask you to know for the quizzes or your homework. Asustado. All right, in our fourth row, rabioso means furious. It looks like the word rabid. And if something is rabid or has rabies, we describe it as being mad. Aburrido is the next one, and it means bored. You do need to know that one. Aburrido. Try to roll the R's if you can. Realize if um, you ate burritos every day, you would be bored with that. So that's how I remember that one. The third one, nervioso, is a cognate. It is nervous. Nervioso. The next one, comodo, means comfortable. Not really a cognate for the whole word, but the first three letters are the same. You just have to remember that there is an accent over this O. And the last one on that row, de primido, and that one is a cognate as well for depressed. De primido. All right, the next row, demasiado, means you're overwhelmed. Demasiado. Esperanzada means you're hopeful. Esperanzada. Solitario means you're lonely. Solitario looks like solitaire or solitary. And so that means, of course, one person or someone that is all alone. And so the feeling that would be associated with that is lonely. The next one, amartelado, means love struck. And you can see the word love in the first part. Amar means to love. Amartelado. The last one in that row, celoso, which means jealous. Celoso. All right, the next row, cansado, means tired. You need to know that one, so make sure you highlight or underline that one. Sorprendido, cognate, it means surprised, and you need to know that one. The third one, ansioso, is a cognate. It means anxious, so there's an X in the English version and not in the Spanish version. Pasmado, means amazed, not one that you need to know for the quiz or test. And timido means shy or timid, and just remember that there is an accent over this I, timido. You also need to know the word good, bueno, 
buena, buenos, buenas, which we've used, and bad, malo, mala, malos, malas, which we have also used. So those are the words that you need to know for this particular unit on feelings and or conditions. All right, turn the page. So let's start using these. When you use the verb a star, of course, that's the second word because when you write a sentence, you have subject, verb, and then the stuff. And our stuff this week will be our feelings. So Raul is a sta. You use the verb a sta because it is like he. And since Raul is a he, the endings for the feelings are asqueado and frustrado. And the sentence, Raul está asqueado y frustrado, means Raul is disgusted and frustrated. Number two, the correct form of the verb estar to match nosotros is estamos. And remember, there's no accent in the yo or the nosotros form. Since it is nosotros, the feelings or conditions need to also end that way. Enojados y histéricos. So we are angry and hysterical. We masculine. Number three, ellas. The correct form of the verb to match ellas is están with an accent over the A. Since it is ellas, it should be ansiosas y comodas, which means they, feminine, are anxious and comfortable. Number four, Yo, the correct form of the verb yo to match yo for a star is a stoy. Since this is a sentence describing myself or I, it would be timida for me, and if you're a boy, it would be timido. If you're a girl like me, it would be aburida. If you're a boy, aburido. No matter whether you're a boy or girl, the sentence still means I am shy and bored. And number five, ustedes. The correct form of the verb, a star to match ustedes, is están, accent over the A. Triste, to match ustedes. Remember, this is one of them that all you do is add an E. Tristes. E contentos or contentas. Either one work. I would probably use contentos just because that's used more often than contentas. And it means you all formal are sad and happy.